today we're going to be talking about profiling and profiling Python pipelines in particular. So profiling is about finding bottlenecks, performance bottlenecks in your pipelines. Um, until very, very recently, I thought this was not possible for uh, Apache Beam Python pipelines. So um, I work in uh, Google Cloud as a cloud engineer in the professional services uh, team of Google Cloud. So I work with uh, lots of Google Cloud customers. And every time a customer asks me about data flow, the runner for Apache Beam uh, pipelines and profiling, I always told them that they had to use Java if they wanted to make a profiling. However, this is actually not the, the case. So I found out that since some versions ago, you have some parameters available in Apache Beam that with a little bit of Python scripting allows you to find insights uh, about the performance of your pipeline. So we're going to see today here an example of a, a real pipeline that I have written, a sample pipeline, and how to find out where the pipeline has a performance bottleneck in order to improve it. So uh, profiling is not only about finding bottlenecks, it's also about uh, being able to locate these bottlenecks in the source code, OK? So for instance, I have here this running pipeline in, in Dataflow, OK? So let me go up in the, in the graph. So I see here that this step is not really spending a lot of CPU on. This parsing some JSON is taking seven minutes. One minute for adding the keys. Well, two hours for applying a, a window. Well, that's a little bit. And look here, this, this step is the one that is where I'm spending most of the time. But this is like a big box, OK? So there's a lot of code inside here. So profiling is about finding out where in the code exactly I have my performance bottom. So this is what we are going to try to find out today. So in the case of Java and Dataflow, this is very nicely integrated uh, in Google Cloud Platform. So you just set the flags in your Apache Beam pipeline and automatically you will get information in the cloud profiler. This is described here in this post, and it's really it's very straightforward to do. So it's just setting an option in your Apache Beam pipeline. And then you get all this kind of information to see, let's say, where your pipeline is spending most of the CPU time. For Python, well, this wasn't uh, available until very recently. And well, it's now possible, but it's, it's let's say it's, it's not a cloud profiler. It's a more a human profile. So these are the steps that we have to follow in order to be able to profile Python pipelines. We need to obtain the profile files. We need to aggregate and extract these stats. And then so we start finding some locations with bottlenecks. And then we will see how to find what's the code that is called from these locations, also using the profiling information. OK, so with all this, well, so we will be able to extract the same kind of information we get from the cloud profiler for Java pipelines, except that instead of a nice UI for finding out things, we will need to use Python scripting. If you want to follow uh, some of the examples I'm going to be using here, so you can use this uh, GitHub repository where I have the sample pipeline and some actually sample output data and some call up notebook with the scripting that we are going to be making here today in the talk. So. If you go to the Apache Beam source code, you will see that there are several options for profiling in the Python SDK. Okay, so that there is the minus minus profile CPU, the profile location, and the profile sampling rate, and also the profile memory. I'm not gonna talk about this uh, in this talk, but this is also an option. The the data is not, let's say, as actionable as in the CPU, but well, you could try to to to, uh, to apply it. To. So. With, this is a, just a flag. If we set it uh, to true, if you just put the, this option in your Apache Beam pipeline, your pipeline will start writing additional files to a location, to this profile location. Lots of files. So basically, every bundle of data that is processed by your pipeline will have an additional output file with the profiling information. And the sampling rate, so it's the amount of uh, times that the, the information is taken from uh, the processing. Um, if you put one, so basically all the operations in your pipeline is, are going to be profiled. If you put like a number, like a lower number, so you will be doing some sampling. Okay, profiling makes your pipeline slower. So use this only for debugging and testing purposes. Don't let's say activate profiling by default 
in your production pipelines, okay? Not even with a small rate, okay? And if you're using like debugging and uh, using this for debugging purposes, well, so maybe you want to like to put a higher sampling rate and run your pipeline for, for less time. So uh, here, for instance, we are running some pipeline. So this is the same script that you have in the repository. And in this case, I'm running in Dataflow. So you could be running in other runners too. Uh, the profiler is the standard Python profiler. So there's a profiling uh, module in, in the Python standard library. And that's the one that is used by Apache Bean to provide the profiling information in Python. So basically, you could use probably any runner. So I have run this in Dataflow because, well, so this is what I had at hand in order to, to calculate this. And to your usual input options, you also have to add this, this to the profile CPU and the profile location. If you are running in Dataflow in Google Cloud Platform, this location has to be a Google Cloud Storage location. If you are running elsewhere, so anywhere where your pipeline could write to, okay. And then what you will see is these files here, like the ones that are here shown on the right side, okay. So one file per bundle of data process, okay. So this will be a lot of uh, files, okay. So imagine if you are processing a large amount of data, so this is going to be a lot. Um, in order to obtain enough information, in order to to be able to extract conclusions. Well, you should be running this in a let's say representative amount of data. Okay. Otherwise, you're gonna get a very, very few results. These are in fact so many files and so small. So these are small files, like lots of small files. This is kind of the most stressful situation that you can put in an uh, object storage like Google Cloud Storage or S3, that you will see sometimes errors in your in your pipeline because sometimes the file will not be able so Beam will not be able to write the file to the output and it will have to retry and so on. So you will see lots of errors in your in your pipeline. Okay, so let me go back to the pipeline that I was running for this example. So if you see here, so uh, let me let me clear the section. I've been running this pipeline for about one hour. Okay. And it already has like 2,000 errors. Okay, but most of these errors we can probably we can probably ignore. See, the, all of these errors are being I/O errors. Okay, and also HTTP errors related to Google Cloud Storage. Probably, see, yes. So this is see, this is the storage. So these errors can be ignored. Okay, because your data will get there eventually. Okay, and even if you miss one bundle of data, even so, it, it's not such a big deal for for profiling. Okay, so it's not not a big loss. Okay, but just be aware that you will see this if you're running this in data flow, because basically you are stressing the output a lot, okay, by producing lots of small files. Okay. Let me go back to the presentation. So um, the Python profiler, so if you go to the standard library, so you will see that Python comes with a built-in profile, okay. Uh, in profile, profilers normally have some, let's say, accepted common formats for for the output data, uh, for instance, pprof is one of the these common formats. Python has its own format. Okay, so this is why it's not integrated yet with the Cloud Profiler in Google Cloud, for instance. Okay, there are no any other profiling tools or profiling analysis tools that use this format. Only the ones that are specific for Python. Okay. Hopefully, uh, Python comes also with another module in the standard library, pstats, that allows us to analyze some data. Okay, so my recommendation when you are using these uh, PS stats modules, we will see some examples shortly, uh, is that you aggregate all the data and then you start working with the aggregated data. These small files that we're going to be producing, okay, so uh, you, the aggregated size of all these files is going to be huge, very large, okay. Uh, and when you aggregate the information, because you have the same code being repeated, uh, repeated, repeatedly run in different bundles. Let's say there's a lot of overlapping between the different files, okay? And you could add all the statistics for the same files, for the same functions, for the same methods in just one file, and add all the CPU usage in just one file. So this is what it is done with this snippet of code. So you take all your files that are in some directory. And then you uh, sort it and then dump the stats into another file. This, uh, in this case, for instance, dataflow.prof. And this will be much smaller than the input data. Like, for instance, if you have 100 megabytes, 150 megabytes of uh, the bundle files, 
using a bundle ratio, ratio of one, the, the, the size of this file will be 117 kilobytes. For the test that we're going to be making today, I collected over 500 megabytes uh, of data, uh, of profiling data, and the aggregated file, the one that you will find in this repo, if you want to try it out yourself without having to run the pipeline, it's uh, 300 kilobytes, something like that. Okay, So if you aggregate the data, uh, you will be able to, to reduce the size, and then you will be able to work with the data much, much uh, let's say, in a much more comfortable way. So without using so much memory, and it will be just easier to use. For instance, uh, we are going to be using today Google Colab. It's much better to use a small file in Google Colab and run and let's say load everything in memory than being analyzing 500 megabytes of data all the time. Okay, so for 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 that Google Colab would be probably short short on resources uh, for handling such a, a big amount of data. So the output is really not that. Uh, uh, user friendly okay so so we will get some preformatted output and also dictionaries if we want to let's say to, to handle the data manually okay that will give us some information um the information is actually quite interesting okay it's maybe not very user friendly but it's very interesting information you will see the number of times each one of the functions is called the total cpu time the average time per call the file I don't know if you can read it here, the file, the line of code and the method or function name that is being called here. And all this data will be available at function or method level. OK. Uh, so you get two main metrics here. In addition to the number of calls, you get the total time and the cumulative time. OK, so the, uh, the CPU time and the cumulative time. Um, what, what's the difference between these two? Okay, so one is actually not the aggregation of the other. Okay, the, the, despite the, the the name. Okay, so these are um, different CPU metrics. Come time is the work uh, work clock time, and dot time is the busy CPU time. Okay, so uh, the busy CPU time. Let's start with this. For instance, if you are doing any kind of analysis of the complexity of an algorithm. And you don't want to include in the CPU count uh, any external code to external code. You want to count only your code, not the calls that you are making to any other code. Uh, this metric will con will con contain only the amount of time spent in your code, not making any kind of external codes, like uh, calls. If you have a function, it's the time spent inside the function without also adding up the calls to external functions. And this is probably a very nice metric for many situations. But in my experience, when you're working in the cloud and your pipeline is, let's say, slow and you want to find out why, it could be for many reasons. OK, it could be because, well, your algorithm could be maybe better implemented for sure. But it could be also because you are calling an external API and it's taking a long time to respond. Or it could be because of input and output. OK, it could be because you are waiting for another function because you are using an external library for whatever reason and it's taking some time to respond. OK, and if you use this metric, you will be able to find out these kind of things. OK, so uh, so basically, if you're interested in performance issues due to input output, a slow external APIs or third party libraries, so this is the metric that you have to use. OK, and normally in my experience for data pipelines, these are like the, the main uh, the main sources of problems with uh, with data pipelines. So if I go back to the previous slide, I want you to notice one thing. Okay, so I see here Python side packages, Apache Bean, Apache Bean, runners, runners, runner, Apache Bean, Apache Bean, API tools. I don't know what is this. Okay, to be honest, API tools. This is not my code. Oh, where is my code? Okay, so. Yeah, very nice uh, metrics, very nice number of calls, but where is my code? Okay, let's see that in, in let's see that live. Okay, so let me get out here of the presentation and let me go here to this, uh, to this uh, uh, collab uh, notebook. Okay, you, you will have the link to the notebook in the, in the slides. Okay, so I will be sharing the slides uh, later. Um, uh, well, and then if you go to the repository, I think you, you should also have it here. Yeah, it's actually somewhere here here okay so so this is the repo i don't know if you can read it here 
So this is the repository with all the code and all the details. There is one file here with the profiling data that we're going to be using today. And if you read this very long readme that I have written, in the section called CPU profiling, you have the link to the, to, let's say, to the solution of the with, with Collab. Okay. So let, let's actually do that by, by ourselves. So let me download the repository, clone the repository, which already exists, OK, because I already have it. Let me just double check that is actually the case here. Yes, here is the repo. OK, very good. So let me continue. So I'm going to import these files. This is the same code snippet that I showed before. OK, let's have a look at this. Okay, so well, so I have here, you can see the Apache Bean, Apache Bean, Apache Bean, Runners Worker, blah, blah. Well, this is clearly not my code, okay? So, well, so what can I do? So in my code, if I go to, to the GitHub repository, so I have a main.py file where I have put, uh, let's say, like the main definition of the pipeline, but then all the transformations that are happening in the pipeline I have put them in this package. Okay, so this is a Python package, do offense. Let me put it a little bit bigger. Okay, and well, there's some business rules here. Okay, some, some code. Okay, very nicely written, but that has a performance problem. Okay, so we already saw that in the UI of Dataflow. Most of the times was spent here, but I cannot really know where. Okay, so there's a lot of code here. Oof, so where? I don't know. Okay. But I know that the 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 the, the, the module is called DoFence. Okay, so well, so let me go here, and then I can try to um, print some stats with this object that I have created, and here I can apply regular expressions. Okay, but uh, don't worry. So I'm not gonna apply regular expressions. Okay, so this is gonna be my regular expressions. You will excuse me. So I don't want to touch regular expressions, not even with a stick. Okay, so. But here, if I apply this, you will see that my code is now is now filtered here. Okay, so I have here these side packages do offense. Okay, so why is this appearing in the side packages? Because when I run this in Dataflow, the first step that Dataflow makes is installing my package as another package in the worker. Okay, so this is my package name, and this seems to be my code, right? So business rule.py. In line 20, there is this process method. Okay. In line 78, there is this parse timestamp method. Okay. Let me go back to the code. Line 20. Okay. Well, ah, well, <laughs> I added the, I, sorry, I added the copyright headers. Okay. So let me go actually to the history, to the previous version. Okay. Uh, because uh, in line 20, you will see it here. Okay. And then in line 78, here is the, the other function. Okay, so I added some copyright header for, for sharing the code. But when I ran the pipeline, this wasn't present in the code. So there's a mismatch in, mismatch in the in the lines. Okay. So good. So this looks like my code. Okay. Oh, good news. So now I see that this method, the process method, is the one where I spend it most of the time. And this another method is another one where I spend it a lot of time too. Okay. If I go back to the source code, I will see that, well, this is normal. This is the process method of the do function. OK, so the do fn. So this is being executed once per element. OK, see, for each one of the input elements, this method is being executed. And then I see that there are several calls to this another method, parse and stuff, inside my, my method. OK, and it seems that these calls, OK, are the ones that are taking a lot of time. OK, because uh, uh, well, so like out of the 280 seconds that this method is, is being called, this 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 method is that it is let's say it's occupying 274. Okay, and well, so I, I haven't found out that yet, but this method is not being called from anywhere else. Okay, so well, so it looks like we have already a candidate for for let's say for problems uh, with my with performance. Okay. But then why is my code slow there? OK. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to here. OK, so I have like a copy of the code here. So why is my call uh, my code uh, um, uh, slow there? OK. Uh, well, so let's try to find out that. OK, so. Uh, um, 
let me check okay sorry i'm checking my notes here so let's have a look at the at the output dictionary that the that the, this print stands produce okay so there is this method pstats that will produce a dictionary okay with with some data and you see that the dictionary has i don't know if you, if you can see it but let me let me let me let me strike one one key only of a okay so of this let me get one like the first key okay So for each one of the keys, I will have these elements here, okay? Some numbers, okay? And another dictionary, okay? So this dictionary contains the code that call my function, okay? Uh, that my function is, is, is uh, it's calling, okay? So if for my files, I try, so I try to find out in which, in which parts of this dictionary my files appear in this, uh, in this location, I will be able to know let's say which code is being called from my code and then so i will be able to know let's say why my code is slow okay so for that i'm gonna try to to uh, uh, filter out my 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 own keys okay so um here for each one of the keys that i have here if do fn is in the key i will i will so i will keep this key okay it's in in the in the key okay so i will keep this key however this key here so if we have a look again here it's not just it's not just one one element it's actually a tuple with three elements okay so basically, I'm gonna try to keep everything that has the do offense string in this in this first location. Okay, so let me put here. This is the first location. Okay, and these are the keys of my dictionary that um, um, uh, that I can use to look up in the rest in the rest of the dictionary. Let's, let's put this in a variable my keys. Okay, and now in this another dictionary that I, sorry, let me. Let me go back here. In this another dictionary, I'm gonna traverse this dictionary, and every time this dictionary has one of these key here, I will keep it. Okay. So let me. I'm gonna do some uh, traversing for the dictionaries. Okay. Uh, key value for key value in this dictionary items. Okay. If uh, if one of my keys, okay, it's contained in this element, the fourth element, okay. So so we have here zero, one, two, three, four, and this is a dictionary, okay. So in this dictionary keys okay in the diction in the keys of this dictionary okay and out of the two keys that i have here okay i'm gonna actually keep this one only okay because i know, already know that most of the time of my process method is actually dedicated to this method here so i'm gonna put here that this is actually my second key okay let's see what i get here if this works no this doesn't work i made some mistake oh yeah because here this is not the key this is the value okay yes See, okay, I got some dictionary here. Okay, good. Okay, let me let me let me store this in some dictionary. Okay, calls from. Okay, and then here I will have some keys. Okay, so this uh, calls not class calls. Okay, so here I will have some keys. Okay. Uh, that I can use uh, to filter uh, in, in my to filter with my, with my code. Okay, so so um, 
So if I have a, if I have a look at this code as, as this uh, at this piece, okay, let me let me let me add some printing here, a prettier printing, okay. So I see that uh, the code that is being called from my function is, is this one here, okay. There is an Apache bin code runner work state sampler. I have no clue what is this, okay. There is this runners worker state sampler fast blah blah. No idea what is this. Okay, and then this side packages hmm, date util parser parser.py. I think I know what is this. Okay, and I'm, I'm, I'm an engineer, so I'm very lazy. And um, I use this nice library to actually um, parse tiny stamps for my code without having to worry about the format of the tiny stamps. Okay, and well, it looks like that this is really like. Well, so this is actually taking some time. So let me go back to the code. Okay, so see this date parser parse. Okay, so this date parser. Okay, this object here is actually from this date util uh, uh, package, and it's very convenient. Okay, because see, I don't have to write any uh, format string for my tiny stamp, and it will be automatically parsed. Okay. But maybe it wasn't such a great idea to use it in a pipeline that was very uh, uh, heavy, let's say, data intensive. Because well, it's, it since it's taking it's taking some time. So let me take this file here, okay? So let me take the I'm gonna take let's say the offending key. I'm gonna extract this. the third key okay and the first element in the third key okay this is actually the third is the um, index two yes so this is this file okay here it is yes and well let me go to the original object and now print some stats only for the offending key okay and I'm gonna sort this by kun time, okay? The the metric that I was interested on. Okay, so it's so it's sort stats now. So see this function here, this file parser blah blah parse uh, file that is uh, being called from my code. I'm spending 270 seconds only on that. So out of the 280 seconds that I profiled for the process method, like most of it, like a lot of it was actually dedicated uh, to this library here. And it's actually, it's most of the time, okay? And if we look, so this doesn't look like a lot of time, okay? So like 200 seconds, that's not much, but bear in mind that this is profiling. So the, we are not, uh, measuring this like for hours. I was measuring this, let's say, for a couple of minutes, maybe. Okay. And if we go to, to, to the pipeline itself, so we see what's the impact of that in the running time. Okay. So see, business rules, 15 hours of CPU. Compare this, I don't know, to the parsing of the JSON, okay, which is supposedly heavy weight, uh, very intensive in CPU usage. Okay. So I'm parsing here every single message that I'm processing, and I have processed already like 23 million messages, okay? And this has been 13 minutes of CPU and my nice library to parse tiny stands because I'm lazy, it's 15 hours of CPU, so it's much more, okay? So you should not pay attention to the absolute numbers here because maybe they will not make a lot of sense in terms of cost, but to the uh, relative proportion of times compared to the actual times that you are seeing for the rest of the functions. And basically like, most of the time I'm spending, uh, most of the CPU I'm paying for here is actually dedicated to this. And, and well, so I could actually parse the tiny stuff myself because the, the, the string will have some format and then I can put the format modifier so I, I could do it myself. Okay, so we're almost done with the example. Okay, so let me, let me back, go back to the presentation. And let me just remind you that you have all these examples in the in the in the repository. Okay. So um, uh, so let's say summarizing the steps that we have to do. Okay. So so we have to uh, sort and filter. Okay. So we have seen that 
uh, because we know what's the name of our package we can do easily easily that okay and with that so we can find out what are the methods in our code where most of the time is being spent okay so here bear in mind let me go back to the previous uh, to the previous uh, section that i split my process method in two functions or i added an additional function this part time stamp if i wouldn't uh, have done this okay if i wouldn't have created this additional function all that I knew is that the process method was the one that uh, where I was spending most time, more time. Okay, uh, for sure I could have done this inverse lookup of what code is being called from here to find out that this was the, the this library was let's say the, the the problem here. But if you split your code in a small functions, the, the information will be more useful. Okay, see if I don't split this here so the information that I will find out here is that this process method of this function is the, the where I'm spending most of the CPU I already knew that uh, the CPU um, sorry the, the data flow web uh, page of the job already told me that I already knew that okay but if I split in smaller functions I get more information about where actually the code is being spent on so if you try to write more and smaller functions so well so that that will be better for debugging and profiling okay and then uh, when you find a location uh, where your pipeline is slow don't stop there try to find out which another code is being called from your uh, function okay by doing this you will be able to find out if you have a library that is slow or if you are calling any kind of external service that is slow and so on okay so we have seen so here is some snippets of code you have also the the google collab uh, um, a notebook with all the code if you want to try it yourself and this is where the useful information is okay because this will uh, allow you to find out the cause of the of the of the performance problems so the next time a customer asks me can i profile apache beam uh, uh, python pipelines i will tell them yes for sure you will need some little bit of a scripting but it's possible okay if you want to repeat this yourself so remember you have the 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 the, the code of the pipeline here in this repo you also have a link to the collab notebook and a link to the to a sample of a profiling data if you don't want to run the pipeline yourself just to just to be able to um uh, to be able to repeat the the exercise here or like the, the example um if you want to ana analyze this profile so this is the collab notebook that's a link here in the in the repo and if you want to try to run your pipeline yourself in data flow well so you can do that with the with a free with the free credits okay so you can get up to 300 dollars for uh, running uh, in Google Cloud Platform, and that should be much more than enough that you need to run this pipeline. Okay, so you're gonna be spending I don't know how much, but really not that much. Okay, um, just remember that this is a profiling, um, this is a streaming pipeline. So when you run it, after a while you should stop it. Okay, so which reminds me that well, so I'm gonna stop my pipeline here. Okay, let me. Let me remove some soon. Okay, I'm gonna stop my pipeline here because my work here is done already. Okay, and and also, so I hope this talk was useful for you. So remember, so if you just woke up uh, and connected to the talk, these are the three main points that I want you to remember. So it is possible to profile Apache Beam pipelines in Python. Okay. Um, I normally work with customers that have performance problems with data flow pipelines. In the, in the majority of the cases, the performance problems are actually related to the implementation of the pipeline. Okay, it's, it's a generic pipeline that you are trying to write, and then depending on how you write it, it will be better or worse. Uh, it will have better or worse performance. Okay, so profiling is a very useful information to know where to look at uh, in order to improve your your pipeline. Is Python supported for sure? So in the case of Google Cloud Platform, not as neat as Java because uh, you don't have the integration of the Cloud Profiler that simplifies all this investigation a lot. But well, so you don't need so much scripting to 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 do this. And well, you have already the samples here to to uh, to do so. And remember, in order to improve the observability of the performance of your pipeline, write small functions. 
because it will be much easier to attribute uh, the problem with performance to a location in the code and, 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 and therefore it will be much faster, it will, you will be much faster in uh, fixing that performance problem in, in your pipeline. Uh, well, so with this, so, so this was my talk, so thanks all for your attention and well, I'm now open for questions. Mm -hmm.